Welcome to another episode of Engagement Now. My name is Dr. Knox Phillips, and I'm an associate superintendent here at DeKalb County Schools. And today's episode is going to focus on the village and how the village, we use our village and the members of our village to help raise our children. We'll talk more about that. But with me today, I have Miss Shirley Smith Jackson, who is a bookkeeper here at DeKalb County Schools at Elizabeth Andrews High School. I also have with us Mr. Rashid Rashad, who is a parent of students who are enrolled in our school district and also a local business owner. I have Miss Morgan Jackson, who is a former student and a proud graduate of DeKalb County Schools, graduating from Elizabeth Andrews High School, and is a second year college student at Georgia Piedmont Technical College. And we also have Ms. Marcia Coward, who is our manager of parent and family engagement here at DeKalb County Schools. So when we talk about this village, you know, it takes so many people to invest in our children. Um, we have uh, talked in great detail in our school district about the fact that it just takes everyone putting their hands together to help rise our children, raise them up to where they need to be. So I want to start with you, Morgan. Uh, I want to speak about your experiences in DeKalb County Schools and, and who's been there for you? What's the village look like for you yeah. in your experience? Um, for me, I went to Elizabeth Andrews my 10th grade year. I started off at Towers High School, so being a transfer student was kind of difficult, but I had an advantage. My mom works there at the high school. Okay. So I kind of knew some of the teachers, some were new and everything, but they're having that bond with the principal, with the teachers, just the staff in there helping you through it, because I know I had a lot of difficulties. So just having that bond with them, communicating them, and having going to tutorials, and just knowing when you need somebody to talk to, that somebody is there other than your parents or anybody in your community. So, How important do you feel it is to have that type of support? You know, oftentimes, I know people, we get shy, we don't want to talk about our weaknesses, we don't want to ask for help perhaps when we need it. For you, what made you feel comfortable expressing a need for help and, and allowed you to open your heart up to others to really help you? Um, just having a communication and having that bond with them first, just having a general conversation, see where they're coming from, probably knowing their background, you might have things in common, and then you feel that like, okay, maybe I can open up, maybe I can tell you what I need help with, what is my problem, and they actually can help you, they have the resources for you, you just have to have that in your, in your spirit, like, I got this, I can talk to you, I feel comfortable. I like that. So, Ms. Smith Jackson, you were, you were Morgan's mentor, yes. correct? Can you talk to me about your experiences and, and what really made you go the extra mile to really want to help mentor her? I mean, she's obviously doing well. She's in college. She's on the right track. Tell us about that experience and why it was important for you to invest in her that way. Well, first of all, it's a passion for me to mentor kids, as well as I have a servant's heart. I love serving people and kids as one of the areas that I, I tend to lean toward more. Um, being at Elizabeth Andrews, um, that's a non-traditional high school, okay. and we have kids from all walks of life, of course, and just to be able to have a conversation with them to find out where they are, where they've been, um, just made it easy. And Morgan was one of those students. Um, there were times that, like you said earlier, she couldn't talk to her mom about things, and she just took to me. And with that, I had an open ear uh, open spirit, an open heart, listening to her and not being judgmental. I tell the kids all the time, I am in judgment, no judgment zone, Support. first and foremost, Support. and the, I'm always there to listen, and the advice that I give you would not be anything contradictory to what your parents are saying. However, I want you to be able to feel comfortable enough that you can come and talk to me and know that it stays in my office. Okay, okay, and so do you all keep in contact now? I'm just curious. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Even as a college student, you're still oh, getting absolutely. that support. Yes. And that's so important. We, um, when it comes to the, the parent and family engagement work in the school district, I'm looking at Ms. Coward because as I understand, there are, there are these types of mentoring programs. And I know that we train, um, if I understand correctly, we train parents to also take on that role of not just mentoring their own children, right? But also children across the school district and across our community who might need that type of support. Can you tell us, tell our viewers about those types of services perhaps and, and what they can do to get involved if they want to? Well, you, you know, it's, it's a genuine feed-in for mentors in the cab. 
Um, there is a formal program that goes through our counselors and social workers um, through our uh, Student Support Services Division. Um, but there's a lot of just organic relationships that are being formed because there's such a great need for our, 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 our children to be heard. One of the biggest complaints that I hear from students all the time is that my parents don't listen to me. My parents don't want to have any, hear what I have to say. And as a parent, I know what that feels like. So one, I will always keep the parent piece right there because I know even for my own children, they will say, well, she doesn't want to listen to me. I know what that feels like. But I also hear the parents who say, oh, I don't know what I, I'm going to do with this child, right? And so we have to bridge that gap when we have those conversations to let the, the, the students understand that your parents are your parents, right? And they have a right and a responsibility to guide you. Now, we can give you some pointers and we can help you through the struggles that you're going through, but absolutely the parent is still going to be very much engaged. I would never mentor a student, and I have 15, by the way, that are in college, have finished college, and they come back. You have 15 I, children? No, 15? I, oh, I, no see. <laughs> I have 15. Well, I call them my children, yeah, right. but they students like that children. I've mentored. <laughs> and they come yeah. back to town, and they knock on my door before they go home. I'm like, have you gone to your mama's house yet? Why are you? <laughs> but it's because... You've, you've given them that attention that they so need. And it's not because they're bad children, it's because they want that listening ear that as parents, we don't have to give, right? We lay down the law, we set the expectations, and the expectation is that you follow those, those rules. And so just having that listening ear, I've always engaged um, parents into um, the relationships of mentoring for me not, you know, betraying the trust of the mentee, but absolutely sharing, you know, you may want to talk about this with, with, with her or him. You may want to do some things different so that you can really understand where your child is, because what you don't want is to lose that opportunity to really watch them grow and understand when you put them out in the real world that they can survive that process. So I, I think throughout the district, we're really doing a good job. We can do better in terms of you know, helping our, our, our youth uh, make those connections with mentoring. And through our volunteering program, we're also seeing a lot of folks coming in and saying, I'd love to be a mentor. So that, that yeah. in itself is, is, is growing. And it's great that we have people in the community who just want to do that work. As I understand, Mr. Rashad, you were trained in a type of program um, that, that helps develop our parents as mentors or as teachers of, 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 um, of other folks in helping our students, right? So talk about your experiences. What program were you enrolled in? How did it help you? And what have you done with the training that you received? So yes, uh, it was the parent engagements for teens. Um, it was a wonderful program. I enjoyed it. I have 10 kids. Okay. And I have eight grandkids. You have grandkids. 10 kids that are your kids. My kids. <laughs> and eight grandchildren. That's awesome. So uh, wow. I have basically have always felt that the relationship between the school and home is imperative between the parents. But also, the relationship between myself and my wife is the most important relationship. And um, so building that relationship from the beginning with my wife, myself, our family, and then building that relationship also with the school. So uh, I'm also an author, I have to say that. So um, in reference to the, uh, as far as the family is concerned and the uh, program that I was involved in, it really just helped because I saw the need of continual education when it comes down to parenting. Uh, my father passed when I was um, eight years old. He was actually murdered in our home. And so uh, what I understood is that how important family was and the fact that I had to learn, so I had to study books and I had to read about being a parent. Uh, because if you don't have the example, where are you going to get it from? So, again, I've always felt the need to learn. I learned from the cradle to the grave. So I consider myself a student. So when the program came available, um, it was just a wonderful opportunity. And I think Mrs. Uh, Tanya Winters-Buford done an excellent job in reference to the program that was put on. 
So kudos to DeKalb County for having those programs because they are very essential. Yes, that's our Active Parenting for Teens program. It's a part of the series of workshops that LaTanya does, and we're very proud of it. It really has been a great program for us. Absolutely. And what, what exactly um, did the program provide? So what, so what were you able to learn? How are you able to use what you learned in that program? Absolutely. So in Chapter 1, it really talked about the power of choice. And really, that, that really sunk home for me because when we get our children the power of choice, we empower them. And so uh, there are many different subject matters that were in there, but what it does is also just give you more skills to hone to deal with the children, your own particular children, but also students at the school. Because I have put on financial literacy programs at the elementary schools myself as a business owner. <clears throat> and I've been doing that maybe for about three or four, about five years now. So it's continuous uh, learning and growing and giving back. That's important. And that speaks to what I think Ms. Coward talked about, is how we can use the expertise and the willingness of our parents and our community to come in and help our students. I'm curious, Morgan, and maybe you can draw on your own experiences or not, or maybe experiences of your friends. What do you think our, our children, um, our students, need the most help with? Because I, I know for students and for young, young people, it's not easy to open up and say, I need help, right? So if, if in the perfect world, if you, if you look back in time, what do our students truly need? And how can we, as parents, as community, come together to really help our young people succeed? Um, knowing that, that you guys are here for us, we kind of feel left out. Like, you really don't care how we feel or our point of view. It's everything is your way or it's the wrong way. So knowing that you really are listening to us and you could kind of sort of see where we're coming from. Because we're, we're right sometimes, but of course we know we need the guidance and everything to show us the correct way or the path we need to go down. But just showing that you really care and that you're really listening, that we have a listening ear. So. That's really what we really need. What, what a great conversation. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Um, but, but we are going to hear now from parents who have, uh, in our community, in our school district, who have served as well as, as mentors, who, who really have been part of this village and helping our students succeed. Today, it really, truly does take a village to educate a child. At Vanderland, we are so fortunate that we have our teachers, our administration, our parent-teacher organization. We all work together to ensure that our kids have the best educational learning and nurturing environment possible. It takes a village to raise a child. You must include everyone um, that is willing to work with you and have a little transparency with the family so that they all know what's going on and be honest about things with the family and they will be able to work with you and you can work with them. Here at Sagamore Hills, everybody chips in to help raise the children up. The teachers, the administration, the counselors, the paraprofessionals, the volunteers, and all of the families of the students help. They're the village that we rely on. So this concludes this episode of Engagement Now. I want to thank our guests for being on our segment, on our show today. I can't speak enough about how important it is to really embrace the village. We have real life proof here through Morgan that when we come together and we selflessly, selflessly help our students, we give of our time and our expertise, what wonderful things can happen. We're so proud of the fact that we have a community that's engaged and wants to do more for our students. But what I'm hearing today is that we need more. So if you're interested and you're watching this show and you're wondering, what can I do to help? Contact the DeKalb County School District. We have several opportunities for those who are passionate and interested and motivated about helping our students. We, we have an opportunity for you. Thank you for being here.